Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today we have so much news and so much to talk about. And so I would first like to welcome all of our Let's Go family members. Thank you so very much for coming day in and day out. You are what makes Let's Go family what it is, so thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone who is new as well. I am so glad you found us and I think you are going to love being a part of us. If any of you have not subscribed yet, we would love to have you in our Let's Go family and I think you are going to love being here too and you never know what the future holds so you're going to want to be a part of it. So first of all, um, the first thing that I want to go through is just some things that I get, I've been getting a lot of questions about. And so um, first of all, lots of people are still asking me about Alaska protocols and we still don't have those. We know that Canada has taken away the testing requirement to fly to Canada or arrive on a, on a marine vessel or on a land crossing. And so that is really nice, but um, we don't know really the rest of it. And so I've been thinking about this a lot and I am wondering if it is really gonna be a little while until we hear these, simply because look how close we are to the ceilings out of the UK and ceilings out of Europe when these were announced. I think that Princess and the other cruise lines are going to wait until we are closer um, to those cruises starting to really announce the protocols because so much can happen between now and then. And there is honestly no sense to them releasing them and then having to revise them a whole bunch um, before we need them. And the first cruise um, on Princess to Alaska is not until April 29th. And so um, that, and the other thing I wanted to point out is with looking at the protocols that they have released on the UK and on sailings from Europe, and, and honestly with what we've seen with the protocols for sailings from the United States, I really think that the cruise ships are, um, the cruise lines are doing their best to make things go as smoothly for the passengers as they can. And so if you've got a cruise tour booked and you're worried about the testing once you end the cruise tour and you got to get on a cruise ship and everything, I honestly would not be worried about that because I think that they are going to smooth that way for you. And when you really think about it, um, I was on a call with Princess the other day and they were talking about um, like if you're going to travel from like which wilderness lodge was it? One of them and you're going to go over to Whittier to get on a ship. It's an eight hour train ride. And um, it's not like you go through a town with a million drugstores that you can go get tested. So they're gonna have this all figured out and I think it's gonna go really smoothly. So don't be worrying about that and we will just, um, just get excited for your trip. Study up on what you're gonna see and what you wanna do and enjoy that part of the trip for now. I have a um, video about um, what you should pack if you're going to go to Alaska. So if you haven't been before, you might want to take a look at that. I'll ask Gordon to put that under this video. He's my um, editor, and so I'll ask him to help me with that. But um, just really get excited for your trip and try not to worry about the protocols. You're probably going to have to be tested before you get on the ship. Yeah, I think so. And um, we know that most people are going to need to be vaccinated. And other than that, just get ready for your trip. Now, the next thing that I sure do get a lot of questions about is... Um, boosters. And I've even had um, a question if people should be getting a second booster already. And you know what, it was just earlier this week and today, um, I'm doing this late at night on Saturday, um, March 19th um, for a Sunday. And um, earlier this week is when Pfizer and Moderna both submitted data to the FDA to get approval for um, a second booster. And so we don't even have approval for it yet and we don't have the guidance on it yet. And so don't worry about that yet. But um, one of our Let's Go family members, Jill, I hope I'm saying their name right, um, they pointed out in the comments um, that um, right now in the UK and in Europe, the um, COVID numbers are going up again. And I, my thing is, I think, I believe it's another variant. If, if I understand correctly, it's kind of like Omicron and Delta. That kind of simple, that's a very simplified um, explanation of it. But those um, numbers are going up again with that variant. And so um, they recommended that you might want to consider getting booster because you don't want to travel that far. And, um, 
show up and show up positive or get sick and so i'm just putting that out there if you haven't gotten a booster i would love to hear in the comments if you're thinking of getting one um, for your upcoming cruises and um, once again this is not a political discussion this is just like a choice and what you're kind of thinking about and i would love to hear about it but i really appreciate because i think this let's go family member jill lives in the united kingdom if i am not mistaken and so i appreciate them weighing in on this and giving us an idea of what they're thinking over there um, the other uh, let's see the other updates we've got several here I want to let you know what is going on with the carnival spirit because this is really interesting the carnival spirit is supposed to sail on April 17th and it's one of their what they call a journeys cruise and it's a 16 night Panama Canal um, carnival journey it's westbound from Miami around to clear up to Seattle because then the carnival spirit is going to be in Alaska for the season then and so I I just wanted to let you know they've got a lot of sea days then and the ports that they're going to call at are Ocho Rios in Jamaica, Cartagena, Colombia, Point Arenas, Costa Rica, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and then clear up the coast. They won't be stopping again until Seattle, Washington. But what is so interesting about this is what's going on with um, what's being required for that cruise. So um, first of all, it says Carnival is requiring all guests to be fully vaccinated and up to date with their vaccines. This means that the vaccination records must indicate a, that a guest received their final dose of the authorized COVID-19 vaccine at least 14 days prior to embarkation. If the guest is eligible for a booster, their vaccination record must also indicate proof of having had that booster. And so that is new. That's, this is going to be one of those cruises that a booster is required if you're eligible. All guests will have to present acceptable proof of a negative COVID test taken within three days of embarkation. Guests without proper proof of vaccination, uh, including a booster shot if you're eligible, are going to be denied boarding and no refund for their cruise. So it is their responsibility to meet these requirements. And then also it says guests receiving um, this information. So this was just barely released have until March 25th, which is next Friday to decide if you're going to cancel your cruise. And you can do that if you want to. But um, since these are new protocols, they are giving people until March 25th to cancel their cruise. And so I think it's going to be really um, interesting to see how many other cruises we see this happen on this season. But um, that's what's happening with the Carnival Spirit. Another really exciting thing is that yesterday, no Friday, in um, over in Germany at the Meyer Werft, Werft um, shipyard, they actually had their special um, steel cutting ceremony for the Carnival Jubilee. The Carnival Jubilee is supposed to be delivered and come online for cruises in November of 2023, and she's going to be sailing out of Galveston. She'll be doing seven night cruises, and she'll be calling. She'll be going to the Western Caribbean, and she'll be going to Cozumel, Costa Maya, and Mahogany Bay in Roatan, um, Honduras. That's what's planned for her right now. And so I just thought it was really exciting. Apparently in the shipbuilding world, the day that they cut some steel for the ship is a really big deal and a day for celebration. And so I thought that was really exciting. And for some reason, I really like the name of that ship, a Jubilee. That's just lovely. And so I just thought I would bring everyone up to date on what is going on with all of that. Another thing that I wanted to let you know about is our amazing Let's Go family member, Jeffrey. He is another one of those that um, um, a founder I think I would call him a founder here with us he has been with us ever since we started and so we sure do appreciate him but he sent me this new story about how in Broward County there in Florida they want to build like a monorail that will take people from the airport over to the cruise port and it is estimated that it's going to cost around 600 million dollars and they they just had a really um kind of a special thing happen that the state's department of transportation is going to go ahead and kick in 12.95 i don't know why they just didn't do 13 but 12.95 million dollars towards that project and in the long run they are hoping to be able to use it to connect um, clear down to miami to be able to bring passengers up that way and just make um, up and then you know come up to fort lauderdale and go to the cruise port and make it so that it's um 
just a really handy dandy way to get around. They want to also, I should say, they also want to include a loop that would go to Palm Beach. And then they, um, in the really long run, they would like it to be able to even hook and get the convention center and um, everything like so that you got the port, the convention center, Miami, Palm Beach, all of this linked together to make it much easier to move people around. And so, um, it says that the, f the first will be a five mile U-shaped loop that goes between the terminals and the airport down to the car rental facilities and um, then bring tourists out to the cruise ship from there. So that's the very first goal is just the Fort Lauderdale airport out to the cruise ship. But I thought that was really an exciting um, development there. And so thanks Jeffrey for telling us about it because that will make it even easier to get around. And the other thing I wanted to tell you that Jeffrey told us, he was just barely on the Caribbean Princess out of Fort Lauderdale. And when it was time to go back to the airport, they just have vans that pull up that you can go ahead and pay and it's like $11 a person to be transported from the port back over to the airport and he said that they fill up really quick and in fact another Let's Go family member he talked about it on the live and I can't remember another Let's Go family member um, after that uh, mentioned that they had done it too and that it was really slick a great way to get from the port to the airport so be sure to look for those now I have another thing to tell you, and I am really trying hard to like, not just talk about Europe, not just talk about the Caribbean, but kind of everywhere, because I know that all of us are going lots of different places. And so I still love hearing from everybody in the Car that is going on a cruise in the Caribbean or um, just anywhere you're going. I would love to hear from you and everyone else loves to hear about it too. So, um, our Let's Go family member Jack and his wife, they um, just went on a cruise out of Fort Lauderdale and he is the one that had shared with us some other valuable information. But one other thing that he said that is so valuable for us is they use that luggage transfer system that you can get there um, if you're on a ship there in Fort Lauderdale, that you know, from Port Everglades there in Fort Lauderdale, that they will take your luggage um, from, you know, you set it outside your stateroom the night before and then you don't see it again until it's on the baggage claim in your home airport. Well, he learned for us that they have the, um, it's called the form for the um, transfer of luggage. Make sure that every person that is going to have a suitcase outside, make sure that their name is on that form. So even if, um, like there's three of you, just get all three of you's name on the form there in your cabin so that you are sure that you get the um, little tags for your luggage and it gets connected to you for for everything that you need to do with luggage, okay? I mean, because otherwise if you put it out there and you aren't listed as someone checking a bag, then they have um, things to straighten out. And Princess was really nice and worked it out for him because his wife's name was on the form um, and, and his wasn't there with right there with hers. And so just make sure that you've got everybody's name on the form. So I thought that was really helpful for us to know. Um, and he did have, they had a great cruise, they said. Everything went really well and he was lucky. He slid on um, a couple of weeks ago while it was still like 40 to 50% because the next week they were supposed to be sailing at 80% capacity. So I'm glad they slid in and got um, in right then. The um, last update that I've got for you is Mary Ann, and she is on the Emerald Princess right now, and they were just in um, the going through the Panama Canal on Friday, and she was saying that they had a fabulous day on the ship. They thoroughly enjoyed seeing the canal and everything that went with it. No complaints about that. They were just a little bit sad that their excursion called the Canal by Boat um, tour was canceled. And you know what? I have heard this a few times from different Let's Go family members that that tour has been canceled. And so I think it would be fun to hear from anybody if you got, if that has ever gone this year. <laughs> and, um, also just a heads up to let you know, if you do have a Panama Canal cruise booked and that's your excursion, I hope you get to go really. And just be aware that it sounds like that gets canceled sometimes. And so I appreciate Marianne letting us know. If anybody has any questions about the Emerald Princess, Marianne is on there right now and she has very graciously offered to find out what people need to know or answer their questions. And so just pop those in the comments below or you can put them over on um, our Facebook group at letsgotraveltips.com. And um, I'll keep my eye and um, if she doesn't see them, I'll um, ask her.
Um, that is all I have right now. It's just been so many updates and so many things to talk about. So much is going on right now. I think it's a really exciting time in cruising. We had the groundbreaking time when cruising was getting rolling again after um, the shutdown and everything. And I think that we're finally getting to a good place. It's um, really nice that um, um, cruises are not having to be canceled because of COVID numbers. It's nice that um, people are feeling okay to get out and travel again. And so I think we're in a really nice place right now. And it'll be really fun to see how this um, whole summer shapes up with people getting out and traveling again. So if anybody has any updates to share, I'd love to hear from you. And the thing I was hoping that we could talk about a little bit in the comments is like, what are your plans? Are you, some of you have shared cruises that you're going to be going on. And um, I just like to hear from all of you where you're going to go and share your excitement. So we'd love to hear about that. And other than that, I'll catch you on um, tomorrow night on our live, which um, is always on Monday nights. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern time, always. Um, we are having special guests. We are having the Down Under Cruisers with us. They are from Australia. Lovely, like loveliest people you are going to meet. Just absolutely wonderful. They are sheer delight to associate with. They were so gracious and had us on their live one evening and um, we thoroughly enjoyed every moment and we're very honored that they would ask us and they graciously said that they would join us. And so bring your questions. We'll have you put your questions there. I've got my questions for them, but um, you can put questions in the comments. You can chat with each other in the comments and we'll do the best to talk to them and cover everything as well as cover your questions. And um, it's just going to be a lot of fun. So I hope that you can join us tomorrow evening. Until then, you all take really good care. Um, I will be talking to you again soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.